antelope are more usually at home in Africa's deserts and savanna. Newborn calves have no idea of the ordeal that lies ahead. For now, they are insulated by motherly love. Many Eland are born in spring, as adults gather in advance of their remarkable expedition. It's also when the grass carpeting the lower Drakensberg slopes is most nutritious. It helps the mothers produce plenty of milk. Calves take their first steps within the hour. But it'll be a while before they're strong enough to escape from predators or to run with the herd. To stay out of harm's way, the calf lies low in the meadow, waiting patiently for its next feed and allowing its mother to stay with the herd. Eland are instinctively wary of predators, so they prefer not to graze alone. As the calves get stronger, and as spring grass shoots appear on higher slopes, the Dragon Mountains will tempt them upwards. Oh, yeah. Above the gathering eland herds, but below the basalt escarpment, live chakma baboons. Born small but smart, baboons rely on intelligence to deal with the difficulties of mountain life. They also depend on each other, not only for affection. Within their extended families, they learn everything how to find food even in hard times. What is smart behavior? And what might lead to trouble? An infant's family is its safety net. The adults are always on full alert. Jackals are persistent, but they're no match for full-grown baboons.
dilutes the nutrients in the soil and the grass loses its goodness. It turns too sour to eat. The longer it rains, the greater the need to find new pasture. The adults have fat reserves to help keep them warm, but the smaller, leaner calves will suffer. When the conditions turn against them, the herd faces a long trek. Better grass will be sprouting higher up, but that means starting the calves on their grueling climb. This first year of life will be touch and go. Mountain scavengers are ever alert for those too weak to move. Today, one little calf has lost its battle with the cold. Cape vultures specialize in cleaning up the carcass. A jackal might have better luck here. Baboons and mother elands send jackals packing, but not vultures. Bearded vulture is last on the scene, but that's because it's not going to waste its energy competing for the meat. It's waiting for the leftovers. Ninety percent of the bearded vulture's diet is bone marrow. However, their beaks are not strong enough to crack the bones open. This darker-faced juvenile needs to use the powerful thermals to help with that. Bearded vultures deliberately drop bones from a great height. Once they've shattered, the birds can get to the marrow inside. They can even eat the bone itself. Strong stomach acids will digest it. Pound for pound, bone is more nutritious than meat. So far from being the poor relations of the vulture world, these birds can exploit a valuable resource. Despite this, they are very rare birds.
highest waterfall turns the stream into a veil of rainbows. The Drakensberg's huge mass influences the weather and therefore all life around it. The water flowing off the dragon's back is the source of South Africa's largest and longest rivers. It's the Proteus sweet nectar which draws them in. The feathers on their heads will transfer the precious pollen to the next bloom. During these fleeting summer months, the eland will mate. The females release an enticing scent which encourages dominant bulls to make advances. Only to be rejected. The females aren't ready just yet. But that won't stop the males thrashing about in the vegetation.
roots worth digging for. It means the baboons can stay put, but the eland are always forced on. As the summer rains continue, the grasses pull their remaining nutrients back to their roots. What's left is no better than straw. For the wandering eland, opportunities to find pasture close off behind them. As a last resort, they seek out valleys where they can browse on the leaves of trees known as auhaut, or old wood. Even the smallest calves can reach the lower leaves. Hungriest Elan doesn't like being stung in the mouth. It serves to move the whole herd on. There is little rest and not much food. The Dragon Mountains all too easily claim another young victim. The slopes have never seemed more desolate. But the eland cannot retreat. There's nothing to eat at lower altitudes. Their only option is to carry on up the mountains, and the river courses are the easiest routes there. Along the banks, there is some respite. This long march in search of food is particularly taxing for the hungry calves, but day by day their stamina is increasing and they become better able to withstand hardship. Rainfall is so high in the Drakensberg that the thin soils are readily stripped of what richness they contain. Mountain streams benefit.
The wide-mouthed frog makes a good living here by hunting almost everything else. There's an abundance of crabs which thrive on decaying plants and animals. And the wide-mouthed frog lives up to its name. It can't be the easiest of meals, but nothing on this mountain is straightforward. Soon it becomes clear why the Eland have staked everything on their upward climb. may be a little rarefied, but so is the Elan's palate. What guides them in their wanderings is simply the quality of grass. But up here, close to the spine of the Dragon Mountains, they are exposed to its most terrifying force. Baboons seem to know what's coming. The Dragon Mountains have a habit of turning lightning into fire. can sweep up the mountain at incredible speed, and Eland are in danger of becoming trapped. Yeah. 
the fire-breathing mountains have laid waste to the vegetation. Few trees survive a scorching like this. Baboons have both clever minds and the hands to take advantage of this timely resource. Like humans, they produce babies with large brains and small bodies. That means months of physical vulnerability and dependency. Mothers need to stay close, especially in this unpredictable place.
Despite the rigors of such high, cold places, there is evidence, tracks worn into the hard basalt rock by countless generations of hooves, that Eland long ago conquered the Dragon Mountain's summit. They may have evolved on the plains and savannah, but each year Elan used these ancient pathways to chase the summer right up to the roof of their world. How and when they found this good pasture on the very highest plateau is lost in time. But it will keep the mothers in good condition and allow them to finish nursing their young. Elan don't form close friendships. They drift in and out of herds as they please. Although it looks like they're grooming each other, they're licking off each other's sweat for the minerals it contains. But there may be useful side effects. It might discourage parasites. Perhaps they gain some reassurance. The calves that have made it to the top will reap the reward for completing the climb of their lives, a last rich stream of milk. However, the gathering clouds are a reminder that, at this height, summer is like borrowed time. Others are already preparing for the worst. Ice rats can only survive up on the dragon's back thanks to their snug burrows, which they must now stockpile with seeds. Gathering this harvest exposes them to more than just bad weather. Servals depend on ice rats up here, but they have to be quick. The servals' large ears can detect their movement underground. But then 